Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm really excited about this video. This is a comparison of a buy sell trade store haul versus a thrift haul. And back in the day, I used to do bins versus stores hauls. You guys seem to really like those. And these days I see that there are people that are really encouraging or sharing their buy sell trade store um, sourcing that they do to flip on Poshmark and or eBay. And while I have been shopping at these types of stores for my own personal closet for my entire adult life, they were pretty much around every corner at San Francisco. And I've really enjoyed shopping them at them um, throughout the years. I don't do it as a reseller. And I thought that this would be a really great opportunity to have kind of an unbiased view on two hours at each location, um, sharing with you what I found, what I think I can get for the items, and with the two trips or the two different experiences, when you incorporate that processing time that everyone talks about, like, is it really worth your time to sell an item for $15? When you incorporate that into the amount is, is one better than the other. And um, so I will put timestamps down below in case you wanna skip the intro where I explain things. Um, I will show all the items. And at the end, I will give you a breakdown on the numbers and tell you my overall thoughts. So if that sounds interesting and you aren't subscribed, uh, my name's Courtney. I am a reseller on Poshmark and eBay. I have this YouTube channel. I have a second YouTube channel that's linked down below. And I live two hours north of Los Angeles in a very rural area. And I love spending one day a week going down there, being in the city life, being around people, um, and just the thrill of the hunt. Um, but I also really love being home the remainder of the week with my dog, Luna, which you can see her paws right there. She's snoozing and, um, just being in the peace and quiet here. So I also have a very good work-life balance. Um, so I don't work all the time. And I think that's really important for me to the health of my business and the health of my sanity, um, is to have really great work-life balance. So I do work a lot when I'm home, but I also take a lot of time off to enjoy just normal things. So. I broke down numbers. Again, I'll talk about these, the details of the, the numbers at the end, but in total, I spent $210 and 30 cents at the buy, sell trade store. And that was on seven items. So that breaks down to $23 and 37 cents per item. And then at the thrift store, I got 22 items. I spent $103 and 33 cents, and that breaks down to $4 and 69 cents per item. Now, two items already sold. That was from the thrift store. Uh, that's actually what inspired me to finally get this video done. I photographed this all a couple weeks ago. This was all from a few weeks ago, but running the numbers <laughs> is just something I procrastinated on. But I need to get these two shipped out. So I really wanted to get this video up. Um, the goal for me of this trip is, or this experience is, should I be incorporating some buy, sell, trade stores when I go to LA? Meaning there's two reasons why I think that that would be beneficial. One, find some brands that I can't easily find at thrift stores. Now in Los Angeles, if you've watched any of my hauls, I find some decent brands at thrift stores, so I don't think I'm lacking there, but maybe you have a hard time in your area, or for me, maybe I have a hard time finding certain brands often enough that would make me happy. So incorporating some buy, sell, trade stores might make it easier for me to find certain brands that I like picking up. The second reason is if you can find something uh, that's being, at a, being sold for $23 at a buy, sell, trade store, or more, or slightly less, um, and you can flip it for $100, is that more worthwhile of time spent because you have less time to process that item at home? So that's kind of my main objective with this. I am unbiased if I learn, if I do this, and if you guys really like this, I'll do it a few more times. And after that, it will probably give me a really good understanding of if this should be something I cycle in uh, periodically. But I think overall, it's just fun you know, to do something for yourself instead of just hearing someone like me on YouTube saying what I think is better for other people. What might work for someone else probably won't work for me and vice versa. So I think it's just important to try new things, explore new options, be open-minded and not be critical of anyone else's reselling journey because we all have our, our own. So let's jump into the stuff. I'm going to start with the buy, sell, trade store stuff and it's only seven items. Um, and then we're going to move to the thrift haul. I think I found good stuff at both, but I also picked up stuff at the thrift store that might only sell for, you know, $20, $18, $20. And that's how I source. So the thrift store really is kind of just like a regular thrift haul for me. 
the buy sell trade store obviously if you're spending over twenty dollars per item you have to be pretty confident in the brands in the comps all of that stuff um so yeah it's a little bit riskier but this is buy sell trade store the first item this is i believe it's pronounced zarina if you guys have seen i've talked about this brand a number of times i found it at thrift stores a number of times and i just love their style this is actually new with tags this is the wilder jumpsuit uh, it doesn't have the price on there but i believe this retail is probably for about three to four hundred this is a size large which was awesome and there is what i didn't notice when i was at the buy sell trade store is there is a clasp right here on the waistband that the stitching is coming loose and then there's also a very small um, spot very tiny spot on the back of one shoulder very minor um i think this was probably from people trying on and it just kind of pulled that threading loose um so i think that's an easy fix you could also wear it as is and the little spot is maybe someone could stay and treat it this is just new with tags so anyways this is uh one of my favorite brands i'm not going to tell you the price per item everything is listed but um this is a brand I've done well with, I'm confident in, and the size was spectacular and new with tags. So, all right, this is another brand that I have, that I'm partial to. It's a cute little cocktail dress. Um, I'm hoping that this is gonna be like the Roaring Twenties in the next couple years and people are gonna be going out wild. <laughs> That's what some are saying. I mean, we're, we've all been tired of staying home. So this is an extra small, small Stone Cold Fox. Um, I did find the style name. It's kind of a little off the shoulder. Either way, um, absolutely beautiful. I think this is such a great little cocktail or beach, um, you know, going out dress. So yeah, really love that brand. I don't find it often. Johnny was, I've sold it a number of times. Um, it depends on the piece. Not every piece is gonna sell for an astronomical amount, but if it's boho and kind of their typical boho style, it tends to do pretty well for me. This is Johnny was workshop, size extra small. It's a black little dress, three fourth length sleeves. This part right here is kind of a velvet. And then the remaining part, there are pockets. The remaining part is just kind of a lightweight, maybe a rayon or something. Anyways, love that. I actually found, I think they had about six different Johnny Wise pieces and I picked up my favorite too. Um, because again, it does, the, the type of the piece does matter. This one I really liked a lot, <laughs> just cause I love the color, the gray blue color. But Johnny Wise, this is kind of a tunic. Again, very classic Johnny was. It's got the eyelet detail, um, just kind of a nice flattering waist area. Absolutely beautiful. That's a size small. This one um, was on sale at the buy, buy, sell, trade store, or I would not have picked it up. Um, so this is Sanctuary. I talked about this recently. This is actually sold at Revolve. This is sold at Anthropology, but it's also sold at Nordstrom and Macy's. So it's sold at a number of different places. Um, I think they're really stepping up their game as far as quality and style. Not everything is sold at Revolve or Anthro, but um, this is a size 2X maxi dress. Um, it's lined, so this top part is semi-sheer. Absolutely beautiful, just a really nice olive green color. A really great summer piece. And 2X, new with tags, is awesome. So because this was half off, um, and it's not a super high-end brand, a couple of the other items were actually closer to like 30. So again, my average cost of goods at the store was $23.37. This is Equipment Femme. This size extra small. This is a lamb leather dress. Man, oh man. I've never sold anything by this brand that's leather or a dress, I don't think. Maybe, I think I have sold a dress. It was a silk dress though. This has pockets, absolutely beautiful. Probably retail for about $1,000. Um, I really love this brand. This was a risky buy for me because a, it's not seasonal appropriate, you know, who's wearing a long sleeve leather <laughs> dress in summer, but it's also an extra small. I don't know, but I do know there are just a couple listed, I think in a different color, no, the same color. And one is listed for 250 and one is listed for 350. And I think it re like, like I said, I think it retailed for about a thousand. The only comp I found was probably right around it's been a couple weeks since I listed this, but I want to say it was close to 200. So I thought this was worth picking up. All right, last item at the buy, sell, trade store. Where am I going to put this stuff? I'll just have to put it right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh item is my mistake. 
And I guess just because buy sell trade stores, they, they do inspect items when they decide to purchase from someone. And so I wasn't closely looking at things. Plus I make mistakes at thrift stores all the time. Like let's get real. Um, I'm in a hurry. I had two hours to spend. I'm rolling through, through things quickly. This is, um, a Sherpa bomber jacket by free people. Free people is not something I would normally pay up for. I believe this was also on sale there. So that brought down the price, but not the right season. <laughs> um, but it was just something that I thought, well, it's a really great fall winter piece. That's actually only a few minutes, a few months away. It's a size small. It wasn't until I got home that I realized they clearly do sell flawed items because this has some stains on the inside lining and this is dry clean only. Um, so that's a bummer. So this one I listed a little bit lower than I was expecting because of that. So, um, but mistakes happen and they happen at thrift stores all the time. So, all right, on to the thrift store. Two items have sold. Uh, one sold, this one sold for $39 in a couple days. It was an offer to Liker on Poshmark. So there was a $1.50 um, discount, shipping discount as well. But this is just an anthropology carpet bag. This is a real leather on the back. The brand is just by anthropology. Um, back section is almost one of the first sections I usually go to because it's so easy to just like skim through and I rarely find anything. Um, this one I actually found too. Um, but it also has, which it's going to be hard to show this little bag of beads in here that's connected to the material tag. So if you wanted to repair any of the beading on this, you could. So my guess is this was probably sitting in a closet and wasn't used or was used in just maybe once or twice. So um, anyways, this already sold for $39. This is getting shipped off tomorrow. This also sold, it was an anthropology piece. Again, my average cost of goods at the thrift store was $4.69. This is language. And it's a size large, it's a little ombre top, three fourth length sleeves. On the back, it's got a little bit of a different material, but still has the ombre dip dye style. And this sold for $19 off for Liker. I think I only had this price for 24 uh, because the, the, the comps didn't say it was gonna be anything worth more. So not a high return, but a quick sell and a profit. So I'm out of breath. <laughs> All right, here's the second bag. This had some signs of wear, but I really liked the style. Um, this has the fringe on the bottom. This is a really nice crossbody. I love the ones that kind of lay flat against the hip, which is kind of the style. This has some signs of wear on the back leather. So, you know, some spots and stuff. Um, but it's in pretty good shape. This is a new brand to me, Motif 56. Yeah, genuine leather made in Morocco really like this. Um, yeah. So, and I got an assortment. This is just a banana Republic silk top, but this is the monogram label, which is a little bit higher end for them there. I had, a, I, I think I got a couple different tank tops and tees. A couple of these were on sale, like 50% off or something like that. So I wanted to, I was trying to pick up items. And, um, so I think this was probably only a couple dollars, but just a nice little basic silk tank top size, extra small. And like I said, this is the monogram line for Banana Republic. Probably, yeah. This is a pair of Athleta pants. Um, these are kind of like, they look like a pant that would have a zipper, but it's actually very stretchy, like yoga leggings. They also have back pockets. Um, so this is Athleta, size medium kind of a, you know, style that you could wear to work and still be really comfortable. This is Anne Fontaine, which is a designer I don't find very often. It's just a halter top, so it's nothing really special, but it has ruching on the side, which is flattering. Um, this is her label. And yeah, 38, I want to say this is close to a small. All right, I found two pairs of jeans. They were on a new rack that just rolled out at this thrift store. And so I snatched them up. This is the Levi's, it's um, the white oak cone denim, size 24. And 
very tiny, but kind of a trendier style. The raw hem, slim leg, really nice wash. I believe this is a mid to high rise. Pair of girlfriend, which I'm, um, I've only found girlfriend maybe once or twice. So it was really, this was right next to the other one. So it may have been the same owner. This is a size 27, but they both had similar waist sizes. So this definitely runs small, but this is a button fly, right? Yeah, button fly, light distressing. There is some distressing up here. There's like some distressing right here. I think it's all intentional because it's just very light distressing and just kind of the top part of the jean. But again, raw hem, a little bit looser, I think around the thigh, but also high rise. So that was a good pickup. This one had a faint spot on it, but it is M.M. Lafleur, which is a good designer. And it's just a blouse. The spot I believe is kind of under the tie on the front. So I don't think that would really be an issue, but yeah. This is an Eileen Fisher silk top, just kind of an ivory cream color. It has the back with some buttons up the back. And this is Eileen Fisher size small. Uh, I'm going through these quickly so this video I can recap all the numbers. But again, everything is listed if you want to see more details. Um, Spiritual Gangster, size small. This is just a cute little tee. Choose Happiness, which I thought that was adorable. This is a frame denim tee. It's a linen striped tee, so really nice for summer. Frame denim. And I think this is uh, extra small. A couple men's items. This is a brand I wasn't familiar with. And at this store, the same as the Buy, Sell, Trade store. I was running around, I've got two hours, I've got to pick up stuff. So um, I don't know if I should have picked this up, but I'm sure I could sell it. There's no flaws or anything. It's just when I quickly looked up comps, I thought it was a little bit better than when I got home to actually list the item. But nice little subtle polka dot and a size XXL for men. I think it probably runs a little small though. This is another men's shirt. This is by Vince. This is a size medium. This is a wool, really nice feel and really nice color scheme. So probably not right for the summer season, but I'm sure it will sell. This one I love. Comps are all over the place with similar um, types of blouses like this, but this is Millie, size two. Look at the key print on this. Uh, Michelle Obama used to wear Millie. Uh, Gossip Girl, the girls wore Millie. Uh, Blair specifically wore Millie quite a few times. I know this because I've had to do all of that Gossip Girl stuff, but um, Millie is a good designer with very mixed comps, but I think the print on this is really great. This is Marine Layer, and actually someone, which I can't remember who, because I didn't realize I was gonna be talking about this. I put this under large, because I thought they just like had a funny way of writing large, but she sent me a message. I don't even think, sometimes I get messages and I get them when I'm out and about and I don't have time to respond and then I forget. So my apologies if I've never responded to you if you sent me helpful tips like this, but she said that Marge is actually a desirable size um, from Marine Layer. It's in between a medium and large. And I thought that was really interesting. So anyways, there were actually multiple Marine Layer, but I picked my favorite one. This is kind of a rough cotton, but the color scheme was really great. I wish I would have picked up the others because those ones were Marge too. And she said they do well. It hasn't sold yet, but again, it's not really the right season. So, all right. And then at the end of one rack, I found, or I saw, this where was it this hanging yeah okay this was hanging on the end of one rack and if you can see right here it's a real real tag and i don't care if it's from the real real it usually means it's designer so i immediately looked at the tag and it's Miu Miu, and i was like well great <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't planning on looking the skirt section but if they have a Miu Miu skirt in the skirt section you better believe i'm going to look at the rest of the skirt so i picked up that one and these were all, these were only, the skirts weren't marked very high. So I want to say, yeah. Anyways, this is also a brand I've sold a number of times. The skirt probably won't do that great. Um, some of their stuff can do extraordinarily well. Some of it is hard to sell. This is probably a harder sell, but again, I was just in the picking things up. So it's just a brown skirt. I do love the kind of draped ruffle accent. This is Agnes B, which I've sold a few times. Agnes B Paris. Um, this is kind of a midi skirt with very subtle stripes. 
So someone donated their little designer skirt section or, and I don't, I'm skirts is not my favorite thing to sell and it doesn't sell extraordinarily well for me, but I'm not opposed to picking them up. Um, especially in the right season. This is a Goldie. I've only picked up a Goldie for jeans. So this is a midi green skirt. Two more items. This is Worth New York, another brand that was uh, in Gossip Girl quite a few times. And this one is kind of a faux fur, feels very nice. Um, just a nice little career skirt. And then lastly was a pair of Vince pants, like a pont knit pant, black. I actually just picked these up recently at another thrift store, a slim leg. It does have like a split at the back of the ankle and an ankle length. So really great career pant. So that is it from the thrift store. So breaking down the, what I think, what I listed everything for. So the buy, sell trade store for the seven items, the listing price. Now I did list high for this stuff because I paid <laughs> an average of $23 and 37 cents for them. So I have to list high because if someone buys something from me on my um, semi-annual 50% off sale. I don't want to lose money. I also have to give it a chance to sit for a while and maybe get a decent return. Um, so everything I listed was $893 for the seven items at the buy, buy, sell trade store. A couple of them I did list for close to 200 or right, right, right at about 200. Um, the thrift store for the 22 items, the total listing price, which I'm not expecting the listing price is $926. Um, so just actually just about the same. So same amount of time sourcing, approximately the same listing price, but a big difference in time spent to process. So if I do 20 minutes per item, again, to steam, measure, photograph, list, package, and ship eventually when it sells, it's about 20 minutes generously per item. So that would be for the seven items for the buy, sell, trade store, two hours and 20 minutes processing time. So that's where I kind of go into the, if you're going to have buy, sell, trade stores as your main model of sourcing, you're probably someone who really likes to source and has easy access to sourcing, which I, both of those have, <laughs> I don't have easy access to sourcing and I have limits on patience with, <laughs> with how much sourcing I do per week. So um, that's why this is not something that is going to be a main thing for me. The thrift store for the 22 items, it breaks down to six hours and 40 minutes to process those items, um, which is significantly more because there's more items to process. So with the, what, what is kind of the breakdown? So the buy, sell, trade store, when I take the total, I did two different price points for each. I did 30% off my listing price and I did 50% off my listing price because if something's been sitting for a year, there's a chance, like I said, it might sell at my 50% off sale, um, which is semi-annual, which is coming up in July. The beginning of July is my, an, uh, my anniversary sale. And um, so if something sold at 50% off, I just have to be accepting of that. And 30% off is where I usually accept offers. Um, so that's why I did those two price points. But when I calculate everything from the buy, sell, trade store, I removed the fees. I did not do any shipping discounts. I just stuck with the 20% Poshmark fees because it's easy. And when I remove the cost of goods, which again, the cost of goods for the buy, sell, trade store for the seven items was $210.30. So on the high end, after you remove all of that stuff, I would get $289.38 as kind of a net profit. That's not including gas money. That's not including um, the time to drive, any of that stuff. On the low end, it would be $146.90 for those seven items. Now, when you break that down and divide it by the amount of time spent to not only source, which was two hours, but also to process those seven items, which was two hours and 20 minutes, it would break down to, on the high end, $66.78 per hour, versus, and, and on the low end, it would be $33.90 per hour. So that's the range with the buy, sell, trade store. And some things that, that doesn't account for, uh, that doesn't account for things like, you know, keeping up with spreadsheets or um, social media, um, YouTube, all that time that's spent with sourcing. Also, actually the time to drive places. Um, so yeah. 
And then the thrift store. So again, the listing price was pretty similar. When I do the breakdown, like I did before, it breaks down to $47.91 per hour on the high end and $30.82 per hour on the low end. So between the two, technically the buy sell trade store would be more worthwhile for the time spent. But keep in mind for someone like me, if I went sourcing more, it would actually be significantly a worse option because of the time and the gas money involved. Now, if you live, like I said, closer to all these stores, like you're right in the heart of a city and you have lots of buy sell trade stores and lots of thrift stores and you can go out sourcing eight hours a day and come home and list, you know, one to two hours a night and you only list three to five items, that could be your business model. It's just not something that I will ever be able to have because I just don't live close to anything. So uh, my final thoughts, thrifting is still a better option for me. Um, I will I will never be interested in, in pallets because um, if I wanted a job where I'm just kind of doing the grunt work, then I would probably go get a job just doing grunt work um, or go back to the career jobs that I had where I was making actually a lot more money for having just sitting in meetings all day. Um, so part of the joy of reselling for me is actually being able to have the thrill of the hunt, the, the treasure hunt, and being able to get out of my house once a day or once a week and being able to find things. So the buy, sell, trade stores are fun and they're it's kind of like glamping to me. Um, I talk about this on my second channel sometimes where there's different levels of camping and you know, bins is like backpacking, <laughs> like primitive camping. It's like just, work and it sometimes is gross and it's just it's it's down here and then you have like car camping which is what I do in my second channel which is kind of a little bit bougier you know I don't always have facilities but I have you know some warmth I have a vehicle I can have more stuff in my vehicle um so that's kind of where I think just regular thrift stores are and glamping where you have showers and you have amenities like maybe a restaurant and you have little teepee huts that you don't have to put up. You're just paying for the glamping experience. That's kind of the buy sell trade store. <laughs> so that's kind of how I rank them in comparison to something else in my life. But so it's, it, it's a great shopping experience. Uh, you see a lot of great brands. A lot of them aren't worth picking up because you won't be able to flip them for much more, but there are some sale items. And there are some brands that maybe will do better online than they can do in their own personal store. So I think you can do well at whatever you do with reselling. Um, but for me, the risk with the seven items that I paid $210 with versus the $103 that I spent where I've already made back, what did I already make back? I made back $40, $43.40 when I removed the fees and the uh, two shipping discounts. I already made back $43.40. So. I think for me, that's that's where I'm most comfortable is buying more items, spending more time at home with my dog and where I live, which I love. And um, and it's 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 just a happy medium. But like I said, no knock to anyone and any strategy. I think you can be a really successful bins uh, reseller and a really successful buy sell trade seller. Um, or you can do a combination of the three, which is kind of more my direction. I obviously don't do much buy, sell, trade stores, but maybe I will incorporate them every once in a while just to have a little bit more variety in my day. But if you like this and you want to see more of these, be sure to feel free to share with someone who's maybe curious about the difference um, and be sure to hit the thumbs up and I will be back with another video soon. So I'll see you guys later. I hope you're all having a good spring summer season and uh, Luna says goodbye as well. She's just snoozing. Okay guys, bye.